So if you've never heard about sleep paralysis before, you're gonna hear about it now. Some people actually wake up in the middle of the night fully paralyzed, but they may even experience hallucinations around them. I think that the craziest thing about sleep paralysis is that your perception of your immediate environment is crystal clear. So if you are in your room and you have sleep paralysis and you open your eyes, you'll be able to see every detail of your room. But you can also start hallucinating. And this can be really scary. And this is thought to be a good explanation for a lot of those crazy stories like people having some sort of alien abduction or demonic assault or any other paranormal activity. So our sleep cycles are very interesting. We have these different stages in each of our sleep cycles. We actually have four different stages and then it's followed by REM sleep or rapid eye movement. And we'll get to that in a bit. And in these different stages of sleep, we have different neural systems that are being activated and other neural systems that are being deactivated. And they actually figured this out by studying people's brains using an EEG or electroencephalogram. So back in the 1950s, they studied all these people when they were sleeping and they had all these probes over their head and they studied their brain activity through the different stages of their sleep cycles. And this is actually how they came up with the different stages of the sleep cycle. So again, it goes from stage one through four in the beginning. So stage one is when you're really drowsy. And as you get to stage four, you get deeper and deeper into sleep. And actually stage four is called slow wave sleep. And the reason it's called slow wave sleep is because if you look at their EEG of their brain activity, you'll see really high amplitude, low frequency waves. And in other words, basically big tidal waves coming at a very slow pace. So that's why it's called slow wave sleep. And then interestingly, you have REM sleep. So right after this slow wave sleep, you have this brain activity that spikes up again, and it's similar to you being awake. And REM sleep was actually discovered in 1953 in this Chicago sleep lab. And what they saw was this crazy thing where people were sleeping, but their eyes started darting back and forth really quickly and they thought they must be dreaming. So as you sleep and as you progress through the night, you will have more and more REM sleep towards the morning. And actually by the time you're reaching morning, 90% of your sleep will be REM sleep. So like I said, REM sleep and this slow wave sleep right before it are really different. You can see that in the brain activity if you look at their EEG. But also there's some different molecules in our body during these two different sleep stages. So one thing that's completely different in REM sleep compared to slow wave sleep is in REM sleep, you have no epinephrine, or in other words, adrenaline. So epinephrine is responsible for our movement and our alertness. So this is actually released a lot throughout the day. And if you ever heard of your sympathetic nervous system, this is what's being released. It's our adrenaline. But one of the few times we do not have epinephrine in our system is during our REM sleep. And this is thought to help keep us paralyzed as well. So this sleep paralysis is thought to occur during this REM sleep where your mind will wake up, but your body is still paralyzed and your dreams will actually start to come to life. And these are the hallucinations that you're seeing. Now, this is something we still don't know for sure. Your sleep paralysis could happen in other stages as well, but it's thought to occur in REM sleep for now. So why does this happen? I mean, this can be terrifying, and how can I stop this from happening? So certain medical problems have actually been associated with sleep paralysis. So things like having sleep disorders like narcolepsy or insomnia, and also mental disorders like bipolar disorder. Also sleep paralysis is known after some sort of traumatic event. So people suffering from PTSD, have been known to have sleep paralysis as well. Also, it's associated with certain medications like ADHD medication or also substance abuse. Now, what if you don't have any of that? Well, it could be associated with other things as well. It's also thought to happen with not getting enough sleep, not sleeping at the right time. So for example, shift workers will have this. Also, if you have a lot of mental stress or if you are sleeping on your back. And interestingly, these same associations are with nightmares as well. So what can you start doing to prevent sleep paralysis? Some simple things are sleeping seven to nine hours every night, sleeping at a consistent time, eating at a consistent time, not doing any drugs or alcohol, not eating right before you go to sleep, exercising regularly, again, not right before you go to sleep, and also, not sleeping on your back. So believe it or not, I actually used to have sleep paralysis every single day, but eventually I overcame it. So how did I do that? 
Well, I'm making another video on that soon. And when it comes out, I'm gonna put a link in the description below. So make sure you check that out. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked that video. And if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below. I will see you in the next video.